Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I am the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. And the sweater that I sometimes have back here, which who knows if it will ever be finished, is not there right now because I grabbed it to show you a technique today. Now, this is a wonderful color work technique. We're not talking about that today. What we are talking about today is how to do sleeves or anything that is a smaller circumference than your smallest needle, which the ones we sell in the shop, 16 inches tip to tip. That might fit this, but we might have already gotten too small. So when you're knitting in a circle and you don't have any needles small enough to go in a circle, you have three options in terms of what I tend to teach and use. You have double point needles, you have Magic Loop, which is my personal favorite, and the one that is quickly growing on me that I want to talk about today, two circular needles. So I have a black needle here, and I have an Addy. Like the black one is, is Likey's, and this is an Addy. Two different needles. They are the same size, but they are by different manufacturers to help me tell them apart and to help show you what we're going to do. That's actually my first tip is use the same size needle, but by different manufacturers if you can, or different lengths, so you can tell them apart. Because that'll make what I'm about to show you a whole lot easier. Let's get to it. Knitting in the round on a small circumference. Let's start adding in things here. Um, small circumference. Today we're going to talk about the two circulars method. Now let's review what these three methods are. Double point needles are the most classic method of knitting in the round, knitting a small circumference in the round. And what you do with double point needles have needles have a uh, needles <laughs> have t uh, points on both ends so here are my three needles that are going to be holding stitches everything is holding stitches in a different way to attach attack it so let's say I have 12 stitches total for 12 stitches here we're going to divide it by three and we're going to so we're going to put four on each one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then the way this one works is you knit one needle at a time with an empty needle. Here's my empty needle. Let's say the yarn was right here. That's that shows that I've just finished this needle. We're gonna keep going around in a circle. If the, if the yarn is here, the next stitch I need to knit to keep going in a circle is right here, is that guy right there. So I'm going to hold this needle and this needle and knit across. This needle becomes empty and moves on to do the next one. Now, if that seems confusing, I will warn you there are equal levels of awkwardness for all of these. It's which one is less awkward for you personally. So that's double point. Magic loop will take the same 12 stitches. We're going to have one needle. So this one has four needles. Magic loop, we're going to have one long needle, one long circular. And you're going to divide the stitches in half you're going to divide it by two. So we'll have, and you're going to have hat, a front and a back to one needle. That means we've got six and six on one needle that goes through like this. I'm just going to draw thicker ends to show you the circular needle. And it helps you go in a circle because this one goes back and you use this one to knit these stitches. And then I have another video on that. 
two circulars. Yes, you're going to have two circular needles. They can be any length. I recommend either having two different length needles or two different brands of needles to make this work, to help you see what's going on. Same thing as the magic loop. We're going to divide in half, divide by two, but this time six, one, two, three, four, five, six, if I can count, go on one needle and six, go on another needle. And they are gonna work independently of each other. You're still, because it's attached, just like over here, it's attached. You are still on all of these knitting in a circle. You're still knitting in a circle, but you're doing half at a time. So let's go over some of my tips and then we'll actually, we'll see it drawn out and we'll see it in action. Here are my tips for how to do two circular method. Just as I mentioned up there, divide your stitches in half and, and, and each half goes on a needle. My tip going in here is your needles should be different lengths or brands. Something to tell them apart from each other. It could help greatly if they, they look different. You're going to be knitting one half, you're gonna deal with one half of these stitches at a time. With both ends of, of the same, the same needle. So you've got one needle, the other needle. This needle works with itself and this needle works with itself. Never the twain shall meet type of deal. Hang on to that for a second. The other needle, one way to help you think about it, the other needle is simply a stitch holder. It's just keeping the other half of the, need, of the stitches away and held so you don't have to worry about them. My tip for where to start knitting when you switch sides from one half to the other. Here's my tip. Find your working yarn. It'll be hanging off your stitches. The working yarn, it goes to the ball. It goes to your ball of yarn. The next stitch, if you're thinking about your stitches in a circle, and it's back here, the next stitch is the first stitch on your next needle. So that needs to be on the tip of your needle. Slide your circular the direction that will get that next stitch on the tip of a needle. It'll only work one direction and that becomes your left hand needle. So let's see this in action. All right. The first action we're going to see is a picture and let's decode this. So first of all, the sample I drew here actually has 16 stitches. Sixteen stitches, eight on each needle. And let's color code this so we know what's what. The front needle here, I'm going to make this front needle blue. And let's make the back needle orange. we could also color code the stitches, right? So let's have the back stitches. I'm gonna make them a purple. Just so we can tell them apart. And the front stitches, let's make green.
And here is my working yarn, that tip I was just talking about. My scribble, the working yarn, comes off there. Let's make that pink. Which looks an awful lot like the purple. Oh well, whatever. So what I was saying over here, down there where we can't see right now, working yarn is right there. If we were gonna keep going in a circle, knitting, here's the last stitch we did. We just finished this back needle. We need to come do this stitch right here. So this needle tip, we need to get that, this stitch right here. This is our, my next stitch. So this needle, I need to push back in to the stitches so that next stitch is on the tip of a needle. You can see if I push this, this side in, the tip would be over here. It's not gonna work. So I need to push this needle in to this next stitch. Meanwhile, the orange one is just going to be a stitch holder. I'm going to try to ignore that it even exists right now. So here is my next picture, which we want to color code again. Once again, my orange needle back here, and he's back over here, just a stitch holder. And my purple stitches, the back side of this, I'm not doing anything with at all. My blue needle, I have pushed up into these stitches, so I'm ready to knit. Let's make these guys. green and you notice I've drawn this I'm about to knit my first stitch but let's follow this cable here I'm knitting with the other end of the same circular needle the needle that I have drawn going in to start knitting with the working yarn which is back here the needle going in, it's the same. It's all connected. Make sure you've got the needle that's connected to the tip. One tip, other tip. They're knitting this side. I'll grab the yarn from the back and pull it forward to knit. And honestly, my tip is on this, once you start, when you get it set up right, which is wonderful, once you start, after first stitch, on a new side tug snug I'll say tug it snug so that the the back and the front kind of pull together but that's only for the first stitch it's to avoid what we call ladders or a gap between the front and the back. Okay, so I'm gonna knit all the way across. I can put that down here, next side. So after knitting across, we're gonna rotate it to do the next side. What that means is once I finished, I'm gonna turn it so now these green stitches are the back side and they were on the blue needle scribble that in the blue needle is our new stitch holder And then the front side is now our purple stitches.
and they are still on the orange needle. But now the orange needle, this is our new first stitch. The orange needle gets pushed in and this needle will come around to knit it. And you are done with a row. when two needles have been knit. Then just squeeze that in there. Let's go see how this looks with real yarn. Okay, so here is my sleeve. I have about 64 stitches here, about 32 on each needle. And I have done two things here. I have two different needles. And this one's really long. I was doing magic loop with this before I decided to show you this technique. I have my blue likeies with my black cord on this half of the stitches. And it's a really long cord. And I have my addies with a clear cord, metal needles, on the other half of my stitches. Now these are both size 8 needles. I am not using two different size needles that would lead to one side being bigger stitches than the other. That wouldn't work. But I do have them as very different needles in terms of appearance so I can tell them apart. So what I'm going to do first is figure out where I am. My working yarn is right here which means I just finished knitting this side. So I'm going to turn this around so the other side is facing me. I apologize for the noise that all my crazy needles are making. And what I said in the beginning and drew is this was my last stitch I just finished. That's where the yarn is, which means this is my next stitch. If I'm gonna keep knitting in a circle. So I need to get this stitch on the tip of a needle, which means this end here. If I pulled this way, if I pulled, I could get this side up on the tip of a needle, but that's not anywhere near where my yarn is. So nope. I'm gonna push in the other way. Get them all up there if I can, if they're not too bunched up. This is now the beginning stitch of this side and it's in my left hand. Now I don't want to grab this needle. This is a stitch holder. The black cord right now is just a stitch holder. I want to find the other end of this needle. These are connected. Here is the, uh, let's see if I can keep that in the camera frame. The other end of the same needle is now going to come here and knit this. So I put it in, everyone's got their own method. I put it in, again, I'll, I'll put this where I need to so it's out of the way. I'm gonna make sure this is not wrapped around that back cord to come here and start knitting. And the first one, I might keep a little snug so I don't have a ladder there. But after that, I'm just gonna take off and knit. And seeing as this is 30 stitches, I may, in the editing booth, speed this up a little bit. I'm a fast knitter, but I'm probably not as fast as this is about to become. Okay, I have finished this side. I can let him go. And what I'm gonna do, because this, I'm gonna have to rotate, this silver one is now my new stitch holder because it's gonna go to the back. So I'm just gonna pull these stitches onto the cable. I'm gonna take what I just knit and flip it to the back side. Straighten out your yarn if you need to. This is where I just finished. So this is my next stitch right here where I'm gonna start. So that needs to go on the tip so I can pull or push to get my other side, which is my blue needle with my black cord 
up on the needle. It might get tight back here because we're trying to keep from ladders happening. So, but you, you muscle it on, you can do it. Now remember, I got all these cables here, right? The clear one, the one I just did, is just a stitch holder. I don't want to grab it. I want to leave it where it is. I want to find the other side. I'm going to keep pulling on this. I hold on to it in case the other end, in case I'm worried about anything coming out. I'm going to find the other end of my blue tipped black cabled needle and I'm going to start knitting. You knit each side with both ends of the same needle. I'm going to take off and go and I will probably, again, speed this up so you don't just have to sit here and watch me knit. I have knitting meditations in the morning for that. They're a minute long, but you could loop them. Again, I finished this side. So the blue needle now gets to become a stitch holder. I'll get my stitches I just finished hanging out in the middle of this cable. And then I'm going to rotate it so I can keep knitting. Straighten out my yarn if it wants to become tangled. I'm going to be, I've actually knit one whole round now. Two needles makes one round. If you need to mark the beginning of a round, I recommend putting a stitch marker one stitch in from the edge because it's going to fall off otherwise. Or you can have a way of marking on your paper A and B or needle one and needle two to know when you finished a round. I'm about to start a new round because I've knit two needles. From where I started this clip, the yarn is here. So this is my next stitch. I'm going to push or pull whichever way works to get that up on the tip of my needle for my left hand. Ignore this needle, resist the urge to grab this and keep knitting. You'll end up on one needle and then you'll have to slide stitches over. I'm going to find the other end of this needle. Now notice it doesn't matter if I pull the cable around the front or the back but what I want to make sure is that this yarn is not wrapped around my cable. It is just coming straight from here to the two needles that I'm knitting. And then I would keep going. Let's get to the end and show you one more pivot. Let's watch it one more time. Okay, end of this needle, let's make this needle into a stitch holder. These stitches I just knit are on the cable now. I'm going to rotate to the other side. So what was in back is in front and what was in front is in back. Yarn is right here, which tells me this is the needle I knit last. So this is the needle I need to knit now. And I need to get the stitches on the tip of the needle so that I actually can knit this as my next stitch. Find the other end of this very same needle and go ahead and knit. Finish this guy up. Now I have knit two rounds with my two circular method with you. Thanks for joining me on the journey of knitting in the round with two circulars. One, two. This is a really great technique for like, like we're doing here, sleeves, 
for socks if you're not a fan of double point needles or magic loop um, for tops of hats anything where the circumference gets really small so um, I have knitters like shout out to Carol who swears by this method I like magic loop uh, because it's on it's on one longer circular some people when they hear about this method method they go but does that mean I need to have two of everything not necessarily not necessarily because um, like I was mentioning before if you only like one type of needle you could have different lengths like if you have fixed circulars you could have a 24 inch on one side and a 32 on the other you could do it with lengths um, I'm a really big fan of if you don't mind two different types of needle like Addies and Chow Goos or Chow Goos and Likeys it can really help when the cord is a different color to help you stay on track so if you have an interchangeable set of needles we're getting some fancy stuff here you just need two sets of tips is what you need you can use different cord lengths that kind of thing whatever you need to keep track of what you're doing um, I think once you get the hang of it it is a wonderful method of going in the round on a small circumference so I hope you enjoyed that I hope if you haven't subscribed already you consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bells because then you know you'll get updates really really quickly when we put up a new video let me know if there's a video you want to see if it's a really specific pattern question I may not be able to answer it here but if it's a general technique um, I'll do my best to get it on the queue you know so thanks for joining the Sun Dragon community today thanks for becoming part of the community please share this or at least give it a thumbs up if you liked it with anyone else you think might like it um, I love teaching and helping people out with knitting techniques so let's see if we can craft on with joy and confidence we'll see you next week bye bye hi baby who's your kitty yes Mm, sometimes that works. Is the kitty loving on my COVID cardigan?